this is uh, a Nick Tempera painting done right from the scratch. Um, the initial drawing was uh, done on board. It's a, an acrylic gessoed board, MDF. He, uh, it's very important to have some sort of plan to work from with egg tempera. In this drawing here, I'm doing uh, finishing off the drawing with uh, a silver point instead of pencil, mainly because a silver point doesn't resist water once it's uh, down, whereas pencil has a tendency to resist the overlay of water which is a, quite an issue really. It's not that important. If you used a light pencil, like H pencil, and did it very lightly, it would be okay. You can use other uh, drawing mediums too. For instance, you could use uh, Conte or charcoal. As long as you sort of fix the end product down and maybe put a layer of... Uh, egg tempera medium over it, it probably work quite well. The reason it's a good idea to draw is simply that egg tempera dries so quickly that it's actually quite difficult to uh, make changes sometimes. So if you've got a plan ahead of time, it's easy to work from it. and. What I'm doing here is to try to develop a sense of what the tonal values are. Having done the silver point drawing, I'm going to move on to straight on to doing a, uh, an underpainting just in one color. I'm mixing the color here. It's uh, quite a nice color actually. It's called Caput Mortem. It's a sort of a pinkish transparent color. It's an earth colour. Moving very fast, aren't I? I think this is about four times normal speed. The entire painting has taken about six hours to do, and there's a lot of changes of position and easels, and it's done over different days, so hence it's a little bit sort of changeable. I'm working from a photograph. It's not entirely necessary to do this underpainting. It's just I wanted to demonstrate the fact that you could uh, paint on top of this sort of thing with egg tempera. It's not an entirely opaque medium, but you can make quite opaque passages. Here I'm just going to finish off in more detail the sort of uh, the underpainting. It helps you get to into the swing of doing the oil uh, the uh, the egg tempera painting itself actually to do an underpainting like this, and it reinforces the qualities of tonality again. Tonality is quite important. If you get the right tonality in a painting, you get all the effects of light and luminosity. As you can see there, I'm sort of able to, I'm painting with egg tempera here. It can be quite um, rapid. In fact, it's a very fast medium. You can just keep going non-stop. You could paint the whole thing from finish to beginning to end in uh, one sitting if you if you had the en energy for it. It dries so quickly you can sort of just keep over painting, working on some areas until they dry, as there is dry. And as you can see, you can keep changing the tone more accurately if you wish by just laying on more transparent layers and building them up. On a, a gessoed surface like this, you can even uh, lift the paint out with a wet rag or some wet toweling or earbuds, wet earbuds. You can spray it and lift out parts that are dro in droplets. 
it's quite versatile. After several days, or even maybe a day, it becomes uh, somewhat difficult to lift out. But over a period of half an hour or an hour, it's, it's relatively easy to sort of lift out and shift and remove things you don't like. Very important to work fast, I think, in egg tempera. It does encourage detail, but it's okay to work fast. Here I'm just spattering on paint, just for the fun of it, really. Lifting out some, smearing some. Trying to restrain that easel from having the painting drop off it. Here I'm lifting out some paint in the shadows, trying to get some brightness back into the uh, road edges. Some of the light's not so perfect here, the, the video's not so great, it's a bit, uh, the lighting's not tremendous, but the sky is in light tones as well, so that the blue parts of the sky with the clouds left out are more easily seen. Just adding small details. It sort of becomes quite important to get these details right because uh, you can lose stuff underneath this sort of a, a build up of layers in egg tempera. So if you know where you're headed, it sort of makes it simpler. In some ways this sort of uh, very raw underpainting is quite pretty really. I'm smoothing out those colours a bit. Masking is quite an easy thing to do. Here we are, I'm trying to sort of mask off uh, some areas I want to make lighter raw to just make really regular building type structures look more building like. Having done those lines, I'm going to completely alter the position of those later on as a warning. Having drawn those bricks in, I'm going to ignore that. You can keep changing and changing stuff to suit the uh, circumstances. Although it started from a photo, I'm sort of eventually just sort of try to make it look right. Having sort of put most of the elements in, I sort of readjust things to suit the composition, I think. Here I've begun painting with the colour. I'm trying to match the, the tonality of the colour on top with the colour underneath. Just approximately. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. This first layer of colour often is a bit transparent and as the underneath colour comes through. Which is not a bad thing because the underneath colour can unify either hold together the piece with a sort of its own unifying colour or the tonalities can sort of also force the piece to sort of unify into a sort of a sort of more accurate painting. I was trying to work this sky very quickly anyway. Just sort of bring it in quite wet. A lot of the time you put the paint on, you have to put it on fairly dry. Uh, if you put it on too wet, it gets a bit sloppy and sort of runs around and does a weird thing. So it gets blobs on the end of brush strokes and stuff that's really irritating. Here I'm putting on a transparent layer of blue. just to slowly transform that road into a more appropriate colour. I'm not going to sort of try to um, 
stick to very realistic colors. I quite like the sort of the strong colors that you can get in in egg tempera. You see them in sort of icon painting, and I th I've got a mind to sort of try to push it in landscape painting and stuff a bit more towards icon painting style with the, in, at least in terms of color intensity. In many ways, you don't mix the color that much either. Especially in these first layers, you don't need to mix color. Because the paint's a little bit transparent, you can sort of change colors by sort of laying them on top of each other. My colour range has been fairly broad in this one. It's got yellow ochre, lemon yellow, a sort of warm cadmium yellow. It's got, uh, that's uh, blue is cobalt blue. And later on I used uh, phthalo blue. And I'm using black. Uh, sometimes later on, especially later on, using naphthol red. And I'm using uh, some, some of that... Uh, Caput Mortem there, and some Cadmium Red. So it's quite quite a lot of colours. That probably shows a bit, the final product's a little bit rainbow coloured. I could probably get a bit more unity in the painting by restricting the colours. But I don't mind the rainbow effect that developed. Very little color is being used on doing this. It's uh, quite strong. The tendency for the paint is to dry darker as you put it on. So you tend to have to add more white than you think to a paint. And uh, it's really hard to judge. Uh, unlike in oil paint where you can just simply mix the right tonality, the right color straight off. And just put it on and it doesn't change basically. In uh, egg tempera it changes dramatically. So a, good, a little good practice to do is to have a sheet of paper or something that quickly absorbs the water out of the egg tempera and uh, as you mix the paint just uh, put a few strokes onto that paper uh, before you put it onto the painting and you'll see what uh, your final color will look like and it gives you a good indication of how much white or how little white you should add. Ah, it's very irritating. I did that window badly. I'm going to have to go and change that completely later on. So I'm going back almost to something to do second layers now. Second colour layers anyway. And the opacity of the paint starting to sort of cut in there. Still a long way to go before it's looking uh, less muddy. In some ways it's better not to do even do the underpainting. It's better even to do a simple, very simple line drawing. Uh, underneath the egg tempera and just go straight into color. That way you can make use of strong watercolor effects by letting the ground come through and shine for the highlights and instead of having to use white to bring the highlights up. So there's a certain quality to this painting that's just different from other paintings I've done. And uh, but it's interesting, it's quite an interesting process. It's, it's, it has a more chalky, flat finish. When you paint uh, without the uh, underpainting, it tends to have a more luminous quality, just like watercolors really, but sort of more glossy. Yeah, 
They're just slamming that colors in. Oh, there was another current color in there. I used a sort of a um, an orange pigment. I can't remember. Pyridine or orange, I think. There's quite a temptation to really get stuck into details with egg tempera. It really encourages you to sort of get out the small brushes. I think it's a, it's a sort of a, um, a temptation you've got to learn to avoid a little bit to, so that you don't sort of immediately make the painting too rigid or harsh. The brushes I'm using are quite varied. Um, often I'm using just brittle brushes, hogs hair brushes. The thing, same sort of thing you'd use for oil paint because they don't hold a lot of paint, especially in the water-based system, so that they, the paint tends to sort of not uh, flood the uh, surface. Whereas if you use a sort of very soft watercolour brush, it picks up too much paint and it sort of floods over and you get big blobs and puddles. You get slightly more rougher effects with the hog's hair brushes too, which is quite quite nice to begin with. Later on, you can start to use softer brushes and then you know small brushes, even incredibly soft brushes to do glazes. See, I'm starting to use a very small brush. Another pigment, I use black. At this stage, I haven't been using black. I've just been using a sort of mixtures of phthalo blue and um, cadmium red to make very dark colors. There is a little problem with um, dark colors in egg tempera. And I know some people say that you can get real darks, but you can't get incredibly dark colors straight off. They look pretty dark in this video, but they actually they're fairly high reflectance. They are not colours are not saturated as much as they are in oil paint, so the depth of the colour is not as deep. They're more closely equivalent to something like pastels when they finally dry. So, for instance, a um, a mineral black like uh, an iron oxide black in egg tempera has got a sort of quite grey sheen to it which makes it a bit ugly whereas uh, so a more transparent black like carbon black is with a very small particle size tends to make the blackest colors basically more transparent colors make better dark colors and more t uh, intense colors You can start to see here the intensity of the scenery coming up. In some ways it's quite nice at this stage, it's uh, at least parts of it because it's got a very moody feel to it. As I layer more and more paint on it, the more opaque layers come up. Later on, it gets a more lighter and uh, sort of more a less grim feeling, really. <laughs> it really keeps you going, egg temporary. You sort of can sit for hours and hours and there's always something to do. You can just and no, don't need to stop. So in a sense it makes it's quite a contemplative painting style. A 
it can really change your visual perception because you're so stuck with it for so long. I like that orange. I'm not really referring to the photograph at this stage. I'm just sort of making stuff up here because it's too complicated in the photo. So I just decided to work something out. Here, yeah, that's a sort of more complete version to that stage. I'll start putting more of these whole photos in shortly. There's another slight change, as we see. It becomes a bit simpler at this stage to just put the videos in terms of photographic changes. Some of them are quite slight. You can see I'm slowly working on sections at a time. Sometimes you might not even notice the change. There's my setup. Is my tablet I'm using for the photo reference and you get a bit more of an idea of the color in this bit warmer version I'm using a syringe to deliver the paint and using methylated spirit to sort of as a wetting agent sometimes where it's necessary especially for the toxic pigments here, some of these some funny reflections in those paintings. Yeah, slowly, slowly getting there. You can sort of see by now how sort of weird the colour is in some ways. But I like it. Some of these last stages I'm applying glazes, just straight out very thin glazes over the top, which are best done when the painting's been dry for quite a while, for a day or so. If you do it too soon, you can lift the underneath paint. So I've changed the positions of some things quite dramatically here. Yep, there's the final picture. I hope you enjoyed that. That's, uh, I'm quite happy with it. The colour may not be perfect in this video, but it's close enough. I'll see you next time. I might do another video on something else.